What's going on? This is Ron Carter, and you're listening to Lead, Sell, and Scale. This podcast is really just an accumulation of my entire journey when it comes to making money online. I think I start off in the very first episode of the first season talking about selling products on Shopify and then quickly move into affiliate marketing, which is where I made my first sales, and then insights that I learned as a coach and uh, really just documenting the whole journey. So I don't really sell anything on this podcast. If I do talk about links in some of the older episodes, they no longer work. Just letting you know that right up front. Uh, If you do want to check out some free training on what I help my clients do, you can always go to therealroncarter.com. But other than that, let's get right into the episode. What's up, everybody? Ron Carter here, your host of Ecom Billionaires Podcast. And today I wanted to share something that you guys helped me do, something that I'm on my way to right now. And I guess the whole purpose of this is just to share with you that small wins add up. Small wins add up over time. So that being said, I'm going to share with you a story of me going live, accumulating an audience, getting them to like, know, and trust me, and, and sharing how that turned into this win that I would have never expected, that I never even asked for, and how that's changing my life today, all within a matter of a few months. So let's cue the intro, and I'll get right into it. What's up, everyone? I'm Ron Carter, and I'm part of an underground movement of entrepreneurs who pride ourselves in giving value over making the sale. We put our message out to the world and let the people we can help come to us. We keep our nose to the grindstone because we know that every piece of content we publish is like a beacon of hope for the people we aim to serve. Unlike traditional marketers, we don't build complicated systems or funnels for the main objective of getting the sale or cheat by starting off with big piles of venture capital cash. Instead, we provide value, solve problems, build relationships, and most importantly, we empower others to do the same. We focus on contributing rather than converting. We're not in this game just to make money, but to make a difference. We build lifelong fans who we can serve over and over again. You're listening to Ecom Billionaires Podcast, and we are future billionaires. All right, so let's get straight into it. Little wins add up over time. And so a few months ago, let me just get right into the story, right? Um, A few months ago, let me start it off by just saying my dad is sick, right? He's fighting cancer, Uh, he's been going through treatment and you know, getting the radiation and and all that stuff. And I think right now he's actually not um, getting treatment. Um, I think, I think they're in that phase of the process. I, I don't know too much about it and about the treatment process, but I know that you're not constantly getting radi- radiation all the time. There's like, you know, they give you the treatment and then they, you sit back and, and uh, chillax, so to speak. And then you look to see how well it did and see the results. And I think that's, that's where he's at right now. And um, so my mom though, she, she asked me around a week ago, right? Actually, it's been a few weeks now. Um, She said, hey, like dad needs help getting ready in the mornings and you know, I work overtime So it's hard for me to be there to be able to help with that So can you come home to be able to help? And she said then maybe you can look for getting another job out here or she was just kind of spitballing with me You know just throwing the idea around but I took it serious. It was like, yeah, you know um, You're asking me to come home because dad's sick. I already knew that dad was sick, right? But they never ever wanted to go into the details about it, especially over the phone, because they don't want me worrying and living four hours away, you know, without a car. They, they want me to just keep doing my thing and not have whatever's going on with them affect my life in any negative way. But I'm like, I want to know about dad. Like that's affecting my life now. Just I want to be able to be there for you guys and be there with you. And um, so I said yes, of course. And I started, you know, telling everybody, going through the process of of uh, letting everybody know what I'm gonna be doing. The first thing that I did, I was like, oh, this is kind of heavy, right? This is gonna change, rearrange my whole life. And, and so I went on a live video on Facebook and I shared my conundrum. I was like, 
uh, like, damn, they want me to move back. That means I'll be quitting the job, but I won't have to pay rent or anything. So maybe I won't even need it and I can just go back and help and uh, work on my online business. And in the meantime, especially since dad doesn't need that much more help, that much help in the mornings, at least yet, you know, and, and, you know, I want to be an optimist and not say that he's going to need that, you know, but still I'm being practical, right? With people that, you know, you want to be prepared, you know, you don't, you don't expect the worst, you don't want to expect the worst, but, you know, it, it still goes through your mind, right? Um, and, and, and I'm thinking like, how much I would be kicking myself in the ass if I didn't go up there and his condition worsened. And then the only time I go up there is when he actually really needs the help. And we can't go do anything fun together. We can't like go fishing or, or do any of the stuff that we used to do when I was a kid because his condition is so bad. So I, I'm thinking about all this stuff and I'm thinking like, I wanna be able to go up there and spend time with them. I haven't lived with my family in the last 16 years in the same city for 16 years since I was in high school. And so I really, want, I really want to go back and I've been wanting to quit my job and I've been wanting to build my business 24 seven online instead of only on nights and, and weekends and grinding, staying up to the middle of the night to get this stuff out and to, to stay on top of my publishing schedule. And so I, I shared about all this in my live video and I said, you know, the only thing that's stopping me from being able to get up there quickly and just be able to spend time with them is the fact that I had a ticket in my hometown. I had a ticket that was unpaid for from before I came down to LA to get treatment, because me, myself, I'm talking about treatment for my addiction. This was like six years ago. Came down here to LA originally to get off of heroin. That, that was the game plan, right? And the mission's accomplished. And, um, and so any, anyways, what ended up happening, I shared about all this in a live video and people were like touched and inspired and you know I didn't even know that this was gonna happen but somebody Daniel Cook he watched my live video and he decided to start a GoFundMe so he said let's help Ron take care of this ticket and these obligations that he has so he can get up there and be with his family I had no idea he started this this is when I was asleep right the day like I did my live video I went home I went to bed and I even woke up the next day and started went about my day because uh, Daniel Cook, he, he made a post about the GoFundMe on Facebook, but he didn't tag me in it. So I didn't even see it. And, you know, he set a campaign limit for like 500 bucks. And um, I saw that campaign 24 hours after it had launched and it had 250 bucks in it already. And I found out about it live. I was doing a live video and Daniel was watching me do a live video. And I kind of touched on, you know, me moving to go see, you know, to go be with my dad and spend time with my family and about that it's happening soon and like big changes happening for me uh, because of it. And that I just need to pay off this fine. And, and I brought it up because somebody asked, are there any offers that we can buy to help support you and your dad? And I was going over the affiliate offers that I have right now. And, and guess what? Dan said, hey, it's already underway, dude. We got you 250 bucks already. And I was like, how? I don't have any offers that give me $250 commissions. So how does that work? And then he dropped the link to the GoFundMe. And I saw it. I was doing my live video. So like my reactions recorded. Like I got all teary eyed and was like, dude, like, thank you so much. This is mind blowing that you would do this. And when I checked, it was like, wow, this has been up for a day. It's already had 250 bucks in donations. And you know, within another day, one more day, so within 48 hours, the $500, uh, $500 um, campaign goal was met within 48 hours. And just a few days ago, I got that money into my account and my ticket that I have is cleared out. I'm actually walking to the DMV right now to also, you know, use what's left to pay the fee to take my driver's test and get my license back. I haven't had a driver's license in six years. That's when I got this ticket. That's when I, I didn't make it to court because six days after I got the ticket, I moved down to Los Angeles to go into rehab. And so that 
even even that, I didn't go into into rehab and just win, right? I didn't go in there and just fucking kill it right off the bat and just be like super sober, like a, like a super sober soldier, right? On a mission to help other people, and it didn't start. It that did not happen right away, and, and I'm kind of glad that it didn't. I went through this process of uh, of turmoil and pain and suffering because I kept using, and that led to me being homeless in Los Angeles and. Then that led to me getting arrested and having to go to court down here for the arrest and and then getting court ordered. I got court ordered to 18 months in an inpatient facility. So I came down here to go into one on my own, on my own accord, and and left it. You know, my, my I listened to, you know, my addict mind, you know, and I left it. And then I ended up on the street out here, just a, a junkie on the street in Los Angeles, panhandling, sleeping in alleyways, all of that, until the cops intervened, arrested me, and they court ordered me to the same rehab that I came down here for in the first place. The universe is a mysterious place. I love it though, there's no coincidences. And so all that was happening and you know, of course the court that I got my ticket in, the ticket was for running a red light, but that's a whole another crazy story because it wasn't just running a red light. I got lucky that that's all they wrote up, seriously. Um, and, uh, but I never went to court for it because they were sending messages to my family back home and they didn't know where I was at. They just knew I was in LA to go into rehab and then I disappeared. And so that appearance went to warrant, you know, failure to appear. That's what happens when you have a court date that you don't show up to. They say, okay, we'll just issue a warrant, and next time some cops run into this guy, they'll bring him in. And uh, so before I go back home, I wanted to take care of that, so that never happens. And me taking care of that is what I needed to do to be able to get my license. And so now, because of you guys, because of building that like, know, and trust factor with you guys for a few months, being vulnerable with you guys and actually letting you into my life, letting you know what's going on, the details of, you know, the pain and the suffering and just the bullshit, you know, the stuff that people don't like to share because it doesn't make them look like a superhuman, you know, people always want to share their highlight reel and all the good shit that's happening. And so I basically, I've been sharing just what's happening, like how I am right now. And that's led to people trusting me. And that led to my audience starting that campaign for me, donating these funds for me so that I can get up there to be with my family and actually help and be a service to my loved ones. And, and I'm so excited. Um, I'm taking this test to get my license today and um, I will legally be able to operate a vehicle. I'll be able to rent a car. I've been taking public transportation this whole time I've been living in LA. Literally living in LA in the, fir the worst way, right? I, I commute nine miles every day to get to work. And do you know how long that takes me? An hour and a half. Each way. Each way. So getting this license is just a, a huge step in, in, in my integration back into society that's been underway for like the last six years anyways. And um, it's all happening thanks to you guys. So really, really appreciate it. And, um, and I wanted to share that because that's a, a, in my eyes, that's a huge win. To any of you guys, like a driver's license is not a huge win. You're like, yeah, that's what people just have. But imagine if you had done some shit in your life that was so fucked up that you literally lost every single thing that you have. Like literally everything everything in your closet, everything that you think is just some extra bullshit that you're holding on to and storing, like you lost all of that. That's what happened to me. It was all gone. All I had was the clothes on my back. I would wake up every day, I'd have the clothes on my back, my sleeping bag, and, and whatever was in my pockets, which was usually nothing. Like I literally lost everything, all important papers, birth certificates, all that shit. I lost it all. Every little toy and trinket and other articles of clothing, I literally had my backpack with my hygiene stuff in it and there was a few times that I woke up and that was gone too right so getting something like the privilege to be able to legally drive around is 
that's right, the privilege. I'm so grateful, so eternally grateful for that. And it's happening because of you guys. And that's gonna change my life. Because even if I'm, even if, like I thought, what if my dad's not that bad off? And he, and he doesn't even want me there because it makes him not feel good about his condition. Like he wants me to visit, but he doesn't want me just living there like he's in hospice, right? And I know that he has feelings like this because my dad is not the kind of guy who likes to ask for help. He was not too happy that my mom did that, right? That my mom asked. That wasn't a both parent decision thing. And um, which kind of sucks because it's like, now it's, I'm reluctant to even share, like all these other people are supporting me being able to do that. Or, and I, mean, I just got off the phone with my dad before recording this episode, just to get a little vulnerable with you guys. And, um, and he was more worried about me and what I'm gonna do for work in my, my career and my life if I go up there and move up there. Which was kind of upsetting because I, I know that he has no idea how this online business thing works. He has no idea like the cusp of what I am actually on with this and how I'm building this. He has no idea what this membership site that I'm building is gonna be able to bring to the table for me and for the family. And that the more time that I have to be able to do it is in the best interest of all of us. He's like, well, you're gonna come up here then you're gonna look for some jobs. And he's thinking like, don't quit your job just to do that. We don't need your help that bad where you have to quit. But he also doesn't understand that I fucking hate my job. That like, I would love to be able to quit. And the only reason that I haven't is because I wouldn't be able to afford living down here where I'm living if I did. So I heard a a wise, very wise person say that when it comes to quitting your job to to pursue your business, that you should have six months of rent in your personal account six months of living expenses in your personal account, not in your business account, your personal account before you decide to transition. And that's why I haven't done it. Cause I'm like, shit, I don't have five grand yet, you know, six grand yet. But if I'm moving into a situation where the rent is free, mom's like, don't worry about rent, just move in. Um, I, I definitely can do that. And that's why I started going through this process and doing all this stuff. And and it's funny, I've already told everybody that I'm doing this. I've told my work that I'm resigning. The, the GoFundMe thing has already kicked off. I haven't started the resignation paperwork yet, though. They just know that this is my plan. And now, it might up being extended just to kind of satiate my dad. I know, I'm still moving back there. But he is, like, upset about me quitting. And, and, and I, might, I might have to take, like, a leave of absence from work for a month and just go down there and be with them and spend time and then come back here, right? Um, And and come back here for a month or two and then move back. Because uh, I'm thinking like, if this condition starts to worsen, I'm moving. I don't care what his opinion is about it because I'm gonna spend time with my dad, you know? Um, But he can be very, headstrong like and what's the best way to put it stubborn that's the best way to put it without talking I'm not like talking shit on him I'm just being honest when he has his own ideas or opinions about things that's usually that and uh, I know that I'm not going to be able to convince him that this extra time at home is going to be great for everybody because I'm going to be able to make way more money by focusing on the business at home all the time than trying to look for a job. He's not gonna like that. If he's like, hey, you need to go out there and find a job so you can contribute, you're here, you're just here, I don't even need help yet, you know, but, but you just wanna be here. You need to be bringing in some, some income and helping the family. And if I'm like, well, that's what I'm trying to do, let me just make this live video and keep doing what I'm doing, he's gonna be like, you need to go out there and find yourself a job. because. He doesn't understand the internet, right? He doesn't understand this information age and the wave of, of businesses that are taking off and, and that even finding a job, I do it, you do it from your computer, right? Um, if I was gonna find any job, it would be a digital job from people that I've already connected with that are gonna pay me way more 
than any federal job. He still thinks that a federal job with government um, pensions is the way to go. And that's because he just doesn't know anything about business and he hasn't been exposed to it. Especially online business. That's what I'm really talking about. And my mom is starting to understand because she's in my Facebook group and she sees that when I do live videos, they're getting, you know, over 100 comments sometimes. And that's only with 30 views. And so she sees that. She sees what's happening in the snowball effect. But my dad doesn't. And so I might have to move back, not all just at once. I might have to, like, stay down here towards, like, the end of the year, take, like, a, a leave of absence and go up there with them. And that way I can work for a month. My dad can see what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. But he won't be on my case about getting a job because he knows that I'm going back home to my job um, with, after a certain amount of time. And, but that will give me the time to use some of my leave that I have saved up. Um, it'll also give me time to, uh, to work on my business and do it not in a place where my dad is going to be constantly telling me to go try to get a job every day instead of working my business. Because um, if I was living there and that was going on, I would have to be leaving the house every day to go find some coffee place, coffee shop or something to go record my videos because he'll be on my case every day that I'm recording videos instead of applying for a job. Um, and uh, so this way I'll be able to put in a lot of work, finish up this membership site that I'm building and that I'm doing. And then when I come back down here and go back to work, I'll basically be coming back to tie up loose ends because the way that I look at it is I'll come back here, the membership site will launch, I'll get some money coming in, hopefully a few thousand bucks coming in just from people buying into the membership site. And then I'll get the residual affiliate commissions that come in after that, because every software tool that I recommend inside that membership site is gonna be an affiliate link um, that's presented to people who have already paid money. So they'll be signing up for stuff, then residual income will come in, and then I can come back home the next time and dad will be on the same, you know, kick with you need to find a job like this you can't just expect this to pay out and then I'll say hey you remember the three weeks that I was here earlier and I was just recording video after video and yeah he'll say yeah and I'll say this is what it earned me and I'll show him the money and I'll say and I get this every month now because of that because of the work I already did that's coming in every month on repeat so I'm going to continue to do this instead of look for a job I think once I can show him a few thousand dollars generated, like within a month period, then he'll be on board with that. Right now, I could show him that, look, I've made five grand doing this over the last year. And he'll be like, that's great, but that won't be able to pay your bills. You need to be able to make a few grand every month. I know that that's what he'll think and say. So I might be able to use this opportunity to be able to go there, show him what I do, come back home and then you know go back later and show him the results of what I did and then I'll probably be able to move back for a month or so before I find my spot because I already know they have a really small place and um, moving back home I have to have the end goal of having my own place that's nearby because um, it won't be a really good work environment um, but all of that extra stuff is not really what this podcast episode is about. I really wanted to share with you the small wins, you know, that small wins add up over time. Like my small wins that I was getting before that GoFundMe got started, like I thought that I was adding up these small wins to lead to a sale, which is still happening. That sale is going to be the membership site that I'm building. But the small wins that I was getting were stuff like more people watching the live videos, more people commenting, more people asking to join the Facebook group. Those were the live, those were the wins that I was getting, the small wins. And they seem like nothing when you're getting them. It seems like, oh, I got a couple extra comments in the last video. I barely even noticed that shit. That's what it seems like. But they add up because you're building trust. And that trust can lead to so much more than you imagine it's gonna to lead to. I would have never thought that I would do a live video and somebody would randomly start a GoFundMe to help me and there would be hundreds of dollars in there before I even noticed. Like, of course I didn't think that that would happen. It's just a prime example of when you put value out there first, when you're vulnerable with your audience and when you're real with them and you're actually trying to connect with them person to person, genuinely, and add value, they're going to do the same. They're going to do the same. 
They're going to seek to add value to your life. And if you have an offer available for them, guess what? Even if they don't want the product, they might buy it just to add value to you because they're so thankful about what you've already been doing. Right? That's how that works. And so I look at it like, yeah, they did the GoFundMe thing because that's what was available and that's what was there for them. But if I had a membership site or some training or something that already solved a problem that they were uh, looking to solve, you know, a solution that they were ready for, they would have took that. So it lets me know that I'm on the right track and that's why I started building the membership site. It's like, okay, they're ready. They're ready to invest in themselves. If they're ready to invest in my own personal problem, that means they're ready to invest in their own problems as well, with me, at least. So that's what we're doing. And I can't wait to show the results to my dad because the moment, I, I, I already know, the moment that I see his eyes light up and he realizes that I figured out how to make it, that I figured out how to make it, not just get by, not just get by. He's gonna love that because his whole goal, like, like most parents, has been to help, help me and my brother be able to have a better life than he did. And, and, and for him, that is a really good job, right? Because I'm not gonna get into the detail of my dad's like work history or his life or hardships and stuff, but he hasn't had very good jobs his whole career, like since he got out of the army. He's been like working at grocery stores, liquor stores, other stuff like that. And that's why he's like, man, you don't wanna come back to this county and try to get a job here. It's gonna be hard. You gotta, you gotta get a job with the federal government that you have. And I know that when I can show him that I figured out a way to create something that's way more beneficial than that could ever be, he's gonna be so proud. For real. But I gotta show that to him first though. So that's the plan. And right now I'm headed to the DMV to take the test for my license so that when it is time to go up there, I'll be able to just rent a car and go. Hope you guys are all having a good day. Take care. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to the episode. I hope you got tons of value from that. I hope it's not too windy out here. I'm on like a train platform right now. Um, But I just wanted to uh, remind you guys that tomorrow's episode uh, is actually, it's a special episode, not just our normal uh, type of episode. It's actually an interview. I'm going to be interviewing Jason Blizefer. And... uh, He's an affiliate marketer. He's been doing this for some time now, a few years. And, um, but he's been involved in business much longer than that, you know, finding you know, his niche and his passion. And, and we dive all into it. I get his, his whole story. Uh, originally, me and Jason connected through Facebook. Um, I think Facebook and Instagram, actually, uh, when we first connected. And, and we've been connected since... For like the last year, I've been watching him grow as a group from the ground up, and he kind of inspired me to start my group. And so this interview that's airing tomorrow is actually the audio from a live interview. So one thing that I do in my group is I go live every Saturday at 4 p.m., interviewing other entrepreneurs, other digital marketers, other funnel builders, anybody who's going to bring value to the community in my group. And and, um, I release those interviews to you guys um, every Friday, the following Friday. So the interviews take place on Saturday. And uh, if you guys want to be able to see those interviews live, you can join my Facebook group. The link is in the description of this episode. But if you guys want to just hear the audio, just tune in every Friday because I'm dropping the audio from every interview the following Friday. So that's what's coming up tomorrow. The interview with Jason. That's the first of this whole interview series. So that's why it's kind of new. If you guys are like, I haven't gotten any interviews on Friday. Um, That's what's going to be being published every Friday. So look out for that tomorrow. Hope you guys are having a good day. Peace.